In the pouring rain, an injured woman carrying a newborn searches for shelter. It appears that some men are following her. She manages to find a hiding spot and sings for her baby. A door opens and another woman asks who is at the door. The lady with the baby tells her she can't go home and needs some help. She asks the woman to hold and take care of her baby as she goes to grab some medicine for her child. This baby, who's cold, is wearing a strange walnut amulet. As the woman looks up, the lady disappears like magic. Years later, a boy and a girl are standing by a food stall. The girl calls him Lu Shu and he's wearing the same amulet the baby was wearing. The girl insists to see a fire show. As Lu Shu sees the fire, he suddenly has a vision and sees a sword. His amulet lights up too. As the acrobat continues to play with fire and impress the crowd with his moves, the boy wonders if it's acrobatics, magic, or superpowers. After the show's over, the little girl insists to go backstage and maybe even learn some tricks from these folks. Lu Xu, who is still wondering what happened, agrees to go backstage in the hope to find answers. They witness a bunch of people shoot the acrobat. Although the two of them were hiding, they were spotted. Reassuring the others they didn't see anything, Lu Xu and the girl walk away from the scene. Lu Xu wonders if the men in black suits kill people with superpowers, just like they shot that guy. They reach home, the girl tricks Lu Xu into getting her instant noodles. On his way to the store, Lu Xu remembers how he was bullied in the orphanage, and Lu Xiao Yu, this little girl, was the only one who had his back. While crossing the street, Lu Xu is suddenly hit by a bus. His body levitates in the air, and the amulet glows. He can almost hear his mother sing to him. His head bleeds as he's lying there on the road. Something in the sky activates the amulet, and Lu Xu's body lifts. The knot in the amulet cracks open, and a bright light shines through. Whatever this power is, it rejuvenates Lu Xu's body as if he's been given a new life, and might as well have some superpowers. His heart starts beating again and he wakes up. Lu Xu wonders why he isn't hurting after such a major accident. Lu Xu gets up, buys the noodles, and rushes home. Lu Xu is surprised to see there are no wounds on his body, but there's something strange on his hands. He contemplates what it is, and a strange panel opens up in front of him. It says the name of a bunch of people and some strange figures. Lu Xu thinks he scared all the people and their negative emotions must be his income. He's now certain that he has superpowers and now he's the Demon King. Could have picked something else too, but Demon King is fine, right? Lu Xu touches a few times on the panel to calculate his income and is given an apple instead. When he tries to bite the apple, it glows and his body absorbs all the power. He spins the wheel a couple of times and wins a script that says Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Lu Xu finds himself inside the galaxy. As Lu Xu and Lu Xiao Yu have dinner, the boy hears something crashing down. They tune into the news and the headlines report an explosion. The boy decides to check his apartment's roof and spots the men in black suits. One of these men was the same guy who killed the acrobat backstage. Lu Xu decides to head back inside but is caught. Lu Xu tells them that he lives there and that he came to the roof to grab the radishes he left to dry off. Suddenly a man falls into Lu Xu's yard. He wonders if this man caused the explosion. Lu Xu quickly figures out that the man is pretending to be unconscious and wants to be carried inside their house. As he makes sly comments, he continues to win points by making Lu Xiao Yu and the man angry. The man pretends to gain consciousness and asks for help. He grabs Lu Xu's arm and uses his superpowers to cause a fire, but Lu Xu keeps dimming it with his powers. Lu Xu is surprised to find out that he can shop from the panel too. He buys celestial fruit and eats it. He decides to head out to gather more negative emotions. Lu Xiao Xiao Yu hands him over a bucket full of eggs to sell. At school, someone gets in a fight with the teacher. It's one of the school kids, Li Kui, who has been awakened and wants to throw the teacher off the roof. Lu Xu steps in and provokes the kid's rage by telling him that he's committing an intentional assault. The police use this as an opportunity to intervene. They capture the kid and save the professor. The authorities at the school want to draw some blood from every student to run a test. They've been sent by a team of men in black suits. As Lu Xu returns home, he finds Lu Xiao Yu is unwell. He buys her celestial fruit, which immediately cures her. The city decides to set up a Dao Yuan class to identify the students who have been awakened. Ji Fei is the teacher in charge. The class teacher calls out the names of a couple of students, including Lu Xun. Everyone including the teacher is surprised. And so Lu Xun, the Demon King, ends up earning more points from the negative emotions. Meanwhile, somewhere on the border of the country, two men with superpowers are having an argument which will possibly lead to a fight. And so it begins. The man in the robe against the villagers. A new student named Li Jian Yi joins the Dao Yun class. Lu Xun doesn't want to miss any opportunity to earn points by invoking negative emotions, and so he teases the new student. 
Lesson 1 in the Dao Yan class is cultivation. The instructor tells all students, even if they have a lower grade level, they can still accomplish great things. Later at night, Lu Xu uses his powers to order something different. After several attempts, he wins a script that awakens Lu Xiao Yu's powers as well. Lu Xu breaks the first nebula and earns a sword, which he gets to keep. In the next Dao Yun class, the instructor introduces the students to a technique called Two Instrument Contact. This technique is meant for performance increase. Every student receives a spirit stone to practice and awakens their power system. They must report their progress to Ji Fei. Li Xiang tells Lu Xu that Ji Fei belongs to a class called Earth Network. Later that night, Lu Xu senses some movement on his apartment's roof. He sneaks from the window and finds a bunch of people there, including the man in the robe. They've come from Aunt Li's husband. The man in the robe identifies as Nei Tong, and he's from the Heavenly Network. He's here to see Mr. Li, Lu Xu's neighbor. Nei Tong tells that the world is at war, and he's here to ask Mr. Li to join him as the last member of the Heavenly Network. Since Mr. Li is unwell, Nei Tong brings him medicine from the ruins. He proposes that if he joins the network, Mr. Li will keep getting his medicine from unexplored ruins throughout the country. Mr. Li declines the offer politely. Since the Heavenly Network and Mr. Li seem to be connected, Lu Xu decides to accept the offer and learn swordsmanship from his old neighbor. But how could he miss the chance to piss other people off? Instead of getting the sword lessons, he asks Mr. Li to help Lu Xiao Yu with her studies while he's away from the house. A perfect plan to piss them off and earn points. A pretty clever move. Lu Xu starts his training with Mr. Li, who has a different approach from the Dao Yan class. Mr. Li is aware of Lu Xu's awakening. He gives him some weights to wear. The lesson that Mr. Li is about to teach Lu Xu will give him the power to cut anything in the world. Mr. Li asks Lu Xu if he would like to take more responsibility as he gains strength. Lu Xu responds by saying he doesn't have any big plans for now, and he just wants to live his life and take care of his sister. The next day, Mr. Li is visited by a former student, who's also a member of the Heavenly Network. He says that the ruins are reappearing. Though they are an integral part of the country, he hopes the foundation won't come in the way at the opening. He mentions the opening in the network once again. Master Li tells him to shush away. Master Li hands over some sodium potassium alloy and asks him to test out what level he's at. Lu Xu has progressed from level F to level A, which is pretty astonishing. But then, the test tube starts shining, and it appears Lu Xu is beyond level A. He breaks through the second layer of nebula, whereas Lu Xiao Yu finally breaks her first layer. She now has the ability to control the dead, but she can only control one thing at a time. If she tries to use the black hole's power on something else, the first one disappears. Lu Xu senses something bad happening out on the streets. Lu Xiao Yu senses it too. The two head out to find what's up. It's Ji Fei versus some other guys who are at level D. With just snapping his fingers, he's able to ignite the fire and cause an explosion, but nothing really hurts these tough men. Police arrive and the Heavenly Network reports the incident to them. It seems that the tough guy isn't ready to give up just yet. Lu Xu is watching everything from the roof. One of the men from the Heavenly Network manages to hit the guy with a spade. All of them spot Lu Xu standing at the top of the gate. Ji Fei orders to catch Lu Xu while he takes care of the tough guy. Lu Xu uses his sword lessons to hop around and dodge every single trick used by the two women like a pro. Meanwhile, the tough guy is able to handle every other blow, including Ji Fei's fire. All members of the Heavenly Network are down, and it's Lu Xu versus a level D guy. He supercharges his power and gives a strong fist bump to the guy, which has felt like a jolt. He then uses his sword to take him down. Unfortunately, none of the Heavenly Network members were conscious to see him win. The members of the Earth Network recognize Lu Xu's power, but they haven't been able to find him yet. Meanwhile, Lu Xiaoyu manages to use her powers to summon the Level D guy. She's also able to control his powers with her mind. The Mass Awakening is known as the Revival of the Spirit. The Dao Yuan class is introduced to the new director, Li Yizhou. His codename is Level B. He tells all the students that they'll be future members of the Heavenly Network. He also asks the student to report a man with Level C abilities guarded by spiritual energy wherever they spot him. The Heavenly Network takes students somewhere unknown. Lu Xu's friend thinks they might be taken to the ruins. Ji Fei tells the students this whole mission is confidential, and if any information is leaked, they'll have to bear severe consequences. Li Xiang introduces Lu Xu to the ruins. All of a sudden, something strange happens, and the maze starts causing destruction. Lu Xu falls into the black hole and lands on a rocky island. All of a sudden, a zombie-like creature throws an axe towards Lu Xu, but he's quickly able to defeat the creature. 
More zombies come out of the ground, but Lushu is able to take them down one by one. Since it's getting dark, Lushu decides to spend the night on top of a mountain. The next morning, he continues his journey to find a way out of this hell. He finds dead bodies of people lying around. The man spots something red and magic stuck in a tree. Turns out, one of the students of Dao Yuan class was creating a beam with a gun or skyrocket in his hand. The scene quickly shifts and we see a strange man in the dark parsing a bunch of students for their extraordinary abilities. He gives them skyrockets and asks them to launch fire if they are separated or get lost somewhere far away in the ruins. The kid Lushu encounters is from another city. Lushu takes the opportunity to spark his negative emotions and win points. He then follows the kid, but on their way, they're attacked by zombies. It's pretty apparent that the boy and Lushu are not fond of each other. And so the two get into a fight and Lushu ends up killing the boy. As Lu Xu continues to travel, he sits by the river, quenches his thirst, and tries to figure out the map of the ruins. He concludes that he's been running around in a circle. He creates a plan to move forward and figure a way out. He continues his journey, but ends up coming across a zombie riding a horse. This zombie attacks him with a spear. It's not just Lu Xu against one zombie, but an army of zombies. And so, the action begins. Lu Xu takes them down head on, but before we even know it, he manages to kill them all. A different group of students is attacked by an army of zombies. They're unable to take them down. There, Lu Xu comes to their rescue. He alone manages to kill them all. He gathers all the swords and weapons from the dead zombies. Clever Lu Xu trades his weapons in exchange for the jewelry the other students possess. All of a sudden, strong winds start blowing at night and ghosts appear. All students unite to fight against the ghosts. The knife inside Lu Xu tries to come out to attract the ghost, but he tries to control it because he doesn't want the other students to figure out his level. The ghosts come near Lu Xu, but they end up getting scared as they see the burning face of the devil, and they flee from the scene. I guess his nickname has come full circle. The scene shifts, and the members of the Heavenly Network, as well as students, are seen surrounded by a pit. Some of the students mention Xiao Qingxai, the lady who slew the leader of the zombies like a boss. The Heavenly Network invites Lu Xu and Xiao Xingxai for a meeting. They are introduced to Zhang Yu Tang, who is from Class C, and together they come up with a plan to get out of the ruins. While everyone's asleep at night, a bunch of students are actually invaders, and wearing Heavenly Network's uniforms, jump down into the pit. Lu Xu, being our protagonist, spots them. He catches one of the members and asks him to make a deal with him since he knows about their plan to steal the Formation Eye. The boy agrees and asks Lu Xu to bring more of his friends. Just when he's about to jump, Lu Xu catches him and they start a fight. Quickly, Lu Xu starts yelling and this catches everyone's attention. The new director and temporary leader prepare all students to battle. When the students enter the pit, they see a dead body hanging. They also see some people sitting in a circle. Turns out they're all dead. As they move forward, they find a gate releasing bright light. Beyond the gate, they spot a temple. As the students move towards the house, the gate behind them closes. All of a sudden, an army of ghosts appear. Lu Xu is able to figure out that the kids sitting in the circle were summoning an evil ceremony and converting themselves into ghosts. He uses his powers and lifts his hand to summon energy which kills all the ghosts. The ghosts are dead, but not the zombies. They appear out of nowhere, but the students and leaders are ready to take them down. Lu Xu finds the opportunity to enter the house. Lu Xu has nothing but money on his mind. He wonders if he can find something precious in the house to sell and make money. He spots some statues and considers grabbing them, thinking they must be more expensive expensive than weapons. He turns out, and one of the students' eyes blink red. Suddenly, we see more red eyes, and these students start moving towards him. Lu Xu's knife starts shining and comes out of his chest. The statues get scared and take a step back. Lu Xu steals their weapons, too. Lu Xu comes across a riddle and tries to figure it out. The leader of the zombies decides to run back into the temple. Li follows him. The leader orders the zombies to take care of Li while he goes inside to check what Lu Xu is up to. Somehow, he was able to sense it. Just when Lu Xu grabs the box beside the riddle, the zombie leader appears and this box falls, but Lu Xu manages to catch it. It unleashes a power that is absorbed by Lu Xu's body. The leader yells, how dare you take the mountain and river seal? Everything begins to fall apart. Even the zombies disappear. Behold, Lu Xu has found the formation eye and the world goes back to normal. Lu Xu reunites with his friends and later on his sister. Upon returning home, Lu Xu takes out the dragon figurine and submerges in it. He realizes this figurine will help him keep an eye on everything around the world. Nei Tong tells his fellow that if someone uses the Formation Eye, this will release an unusual aura which will be reported to him immediately, and they will be able to know where the eye was used. And that's the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you saw, subscribe to the channel. I'll be uploading a lot of videos just like this, so I'll see you at the next one.